This morning, Iran's master terrorist is dead. The architect and chief engineer for the world's most active state sponsor of terrorism has been removed from the battlefield at the hand of the United States military. No man alive was more directly responsible for the deaths of more American service members than Qasem Soleimani, the leader of the Quds Force within Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Soleimani's schemes and his agents killed hundreds of American service members in Iraq and Afghanistan. He personally oversaw the state-sponsored terrorism that Iran used to kill our sons and our daughters. And as we've seen in recent days and weeks, he and his terrorists posed an ongoing and growing threat to American lives and American interests. Soleimani made it his life's work to take the Iranian revolutionary call for death to America and death to Israel and turn them into action. But this terrorist mastermind was not just a threat to the United States and Israel. For more than a decade, he masterminded Iran's malevolent and destabilizing work throughout the entire Middle East. He created, sustained, and directed terrorist proxies everywhere from Yemen to Iraq to Syria to Lebanon. Innocents were killed. These sovereign countries were destabilized. In Syria, this leading terrorist and his agents acted as strategists, enablers, and accomplices to Bashar al-Assad's brutal repression and the slaughter of the Syrian people. In Iraq, his violence expanded Iran's influence at the expense of the Iraqis themselves. His dark sectarian vision disenfranchised countless Sunni Arabs and paved the way for the rise of ISIS. And with ISIS largely defeated, Soleimani and his agents again turned their sights on controlling the Iraqi people, who through massive protests are rejecting not only a corrupt government, but also Iran's influence over that government. And once again, there were Iran and its proxies facilitating violence against these peaceful protesters. For too long, for too long, this evil man operated without constraint and countless innocents have suffered for it. Now his terrorist leadership has been ended. Now, predictably enough in this political environment, the operation that led to Soleimani's death may prove controversial or divisive. Although I anticipate and welcome a debate about America's interest in foreign policy in the Middle East, I recommend that all senators wait to review the facts and hear from the administration before passing much public judgment on this operation and its potential consequences. The administration will be briefing staff today on the situation in Iraq. We're working to arrange a classified briefing for all senators early next week. Uh, for my part, I've spoken to the Secretary of Defense and I'm encouraged by the steps the U.S. military is taking to defend American personnel and interests from a growing Iranian threat. The Senate will have to address some of the deepest institutional questions contemplated by our Constitution. We'll have to decide whether we're going to safeguard core governing traditions or let short-term partisan rage overcome them. Back in December, I explained how House Democrats sprint into the most rushed 
the least fair and least thorough impeachment inquiry in American history has jeopardized the foundations of our system of government. Last spring, Speaker Pelosi told the country, quote, impeachment is so divisive to the country that unless there's something so compelling and overwhelming and bipartisan, I don't think we should go down that path. That was the speaker less than a year ago. Back in 1998, when Democrats were busy defending President Clinton, Congressman Jerry Nadler said, there must never be a narrowly voted impeachment or an impeachment substantially supported by one of our major political parties and largely opposed by the other. Such an impeachment would lack legitimacy, said Congressman Jerry Nadler 20 years ago. That was obviously a standard when the Democrat was in the White House. But ultimately, House Democrats cared more about attacking President Trump than keeping their promises. So they rushed through a slapdash investigation. They decided not to bother with the standard legal processes for pursuing witnesses and evidence. Don't have time to do that. Chairman Adam Schiff told the entire country on national television that getting court decisions takes a long time. He didn't want to wait. It takes a long time to go to court. So they just plowed ahead, plowed right ahead with a historically weak case and impeached a duly elected president with votes from just one, just one political party. 